Hey everyone, Sky here to discuss Lone Survivor, starring Mark Wahlberg, Taylor Kitsch, Emile Hirsch, Ben Foster, and Eric Bana, directed by Peter Berg. Now, before I get into this, I didn't know this was a book. And should I discuss whether or not if I should read it or not? Well, I'll discuss that at the end. But, I did see this movie in theaters, and I remember it being a little bit graphic. But let's see if it's any more graphic than it is right now. Let's talk about it. I love the opening sequence of soldiers training to become soldiers, and it makes people think either they want to be in the war or not, but I enjoyed that sequence for inspirational reasons. In June 2005, we get introduced to the soldiers. The hero and the lone survivor himself, Marcus Luttrell, played by Mark Wahlberg, and yes, in case you were wondering, this is a biography who wrote the book that inspired Peter Berg to make this movie today. The other soldiers we get introduced to is Michael Murphy, played by Taylor Kitsch, who I will be reviewing in this movie when I get to that series. Which I'll hang on to my review until I get to that movie. Danny Dietz, played by Emile Hirsch, who I saw in movies like these. but has a beard. And I like the character so far, but I think of Emile Hirsch as a teenager, despite he's only 33 years old now, but five years ago when this movie was released, he was 28. Matt Ax Axelson, played by Ben Foster, who I reviewed before in this 2004 movie. And I like him here. And we get introduced to Commander Eric Christensen, played by Eric Bana, from this 2003 movie and I've reviewed before. And I like him as a commanding officer. All the characters except for Christensen that I brought up go on the hunt for an Afghanistan for a notorious Taliban leader, Ahmed Shah, who's killed lots of innocent people. Now, I love survival movies, like, for example... I'm liking this as a survival story as well. Alexander Ludwig as Shane Patton. Now, I've seen this guy in this movie. And so far as a soldier, I ain't buying it. And thank God he stays away from this mission and is barely in this movie because I'm not a fan of this guy. But I do like his Napoleon Dynamite dance. The four men go to Afghanistan and to hunt and kill Shaw. And while on that mission, they run into an elderly man and a couple of kids with goats. And while that is going on, they do overuse the word fuck. Almost every sentence is like, fuck, 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 fuck. Like, give me a fucking break with that dialogue. Like, so you don't overuse the word, that fucking word as much as possible. It almost reminds me of that Schwarzenegger movie where... They say a lot of the word every two seconds, and that movie was. And that was not a good thing, nor was Sabotage a good movie, which it wasn't, by the way. And I'm not going to talk about that right now. Mike lets the hostages go, and they get shot to go after the four soldiers, and that's when the shootings and deaths of the soldiers begin. And I do like the action on those scenes. It, it is a little prolonged, sure, but I like it. The soldiers are banged up pretty damn bad, and Danny gets it the worst. And he can't walk or run while the bad guys catch up with them. And together, and the other three soldiers either put dirt in his wounds or put pressure on the spots where he was shot. Mike almost saves him, but suddenly a bazooka shot comes in and drops Danny on the ground and Mike going down a hill. And Danny gets shot as well. Which was a very sad scene, but hey, you've got to remember, war is hell. I think they pulled the war as hell off pretty fucking well in my mind. Mike makes the call to his base and gets shot in the back, and I found that scene very devastating. Because he was the lieutenant of the team, so Axe and Marcus are left. And Axe gets shot on the side of his head. And some troops come in and save their asses until a bazooka hits the troops down. 
Axe is out of bullets and is dead, and the only person left is Marcus. And that was a tragic scene when Marcus lose, lost his brothers and is, and is all alone. It's very tragic to me. I'm, I'm kind of heartbroken. Marcus gets found by a man who's from Afghanistan but sides with the Americans with his family and helps Marcus hide away from the Taliban's who want him dead. And Shaw's men gets near Marcus and almost cuts his head off until the American sided man saves him and I almost dumped in my underpanties. And by that I mean took a dump in my underpanties. The other scene I thought was fucking painful, just so punk fucking painful to watch is when Marcus pulls a pokey thing out of his leg and I thought, I can't look. I had to do this the whole time. Shaw's Men versus the Nice Villagers Round 2 is an intense battle and I love how the kid saves Marcus and hides him and how he he helps Marcus out with the knife and stabs one of the Shaw's men and I thought it's a good it's good that good it's good that our that good for our enemy to be our allies sometimes in movies in real life that that they can help out Marcus is rescued in such a satisfying ending for a war movie and I like the song to pick the honor of the soldiers it was just honorable now it's time for the rating I'll give this movie a 8.7 out of 10. I love how intense in some cases this movie is and how in other cases it's tragic. But we still honor our soldiers and I like that I can care for the characters in this movie. And Marcus Luttrell, I've never read the book and I probably should after watching this movie. Bravo, sir. Bravo. You're an American hero. Thank you for your service, writing the book and movie, and making this movie happen, and well done, sir. And I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and next week I will be back with Deepwater Horizon, and until next time...